Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Candace. Congrats on making it through this course. Now that you've made it this far, we're here to give you a sneak peek into what an interview on the technical subjects covered by this course might look like. We hope this will help you have a better idea what to expect in your next interview. Just remember to keep learning and keep practicing. Okay, in this scenario, let's say I'm a small business owner and you know, I only have about 15 employees, but I expect it to grow over the next couple of years. I had a friend who was hacked that lost a lot of sensitive data. So I wanna make sure I understand how to prevent that happening from my business. Walk me through some best practices for network security. So you want to list out all the services that you'll need on a network, and then you also want to disable all the services that you won't use. This principle can be applied to all aspects of your infrastructure. So for example, if we have a firewall, we can configure it to allow all the services that you want and then disable all the services that you don't want. So it'll block all that traffic. Oh, okay. Interesting. And why, why do we use that philosophy or what, what is that philosophy called? So we'll use this because it allows for you to not have vulnerabilities to slip through, and this is also called whitelisting, so instead of blacklisting. Um, okay, and so why would we disable things that, that I wouldn't be using? So the reason why you want to restrict these services that you won't use is because it will allow you to know what's coming in because you know what you have allowed instead of like having some services blocked because it will allow more vulnerabilities to come through. Okay, good. Um, what are some other things that I might need? So another thing you might need is a network monitoring solution. This will be helpful because it'll allow you to identify traffic that's coming through your network. So one other, one other thing that comes up, I, I work with a lot of contractors, right? And a lot of times they'll bring their own machines onto our network. Um, is there anything I need to be concerned about with that, with them connecting to my network with their own machines? Yes, so you wanna restrict those machines just because you don't control them and you don't know what's on them. So I would say we could set up a different segment on the network or we can have a different wireless network. Okay, good. Yeah, so wireless is actually really important. I, I do want to have a wireless network. How do we actually secure the wireless network? What would be some things that we can implement there? We can use strong encryption like WPA2. And what is WPA2? Why is that better than some of the other encryption methods? WPA2 improves the security of a network because it has a stronger encryption method called AES. Okay, and so the last thing I wanted to ask you about was uh, phishing attacks. I've, I've heard that this is a common way for hackers to, to get passwords and things like that, and I wanna make sure that my employees don't get, don't get hacked by a phishing attack. Um, how do we prevent that? So you wanna have your employees use strong passwords, so you can set the password requirements to have symbols, numbers, uppercase and lowercase letters. You wanna have your employees change their passwords a few times throughout the year. Also have them use two-factor authentication. And you can just educate your employees just to let them know like not to open up suspicious emails or emails from senders that they don't know. Okay, and can you explain what two-factor is real quick? Yes, so two-factor authentication is two variations of authentication methods and the authentication methods can be either a password, fingerprint, um, something that's related to biometrics, or it can also be a security chip. Oh, okay, great, I didn't know that. All right, thanks very much. Thanks. In this scenario, we've seen how important it is to clearly explain yourself and to articulate IT concepts and the advantages of the technologies chosen. In a technical interview, there are going to be a lot of technical concepts that need to be explained, and it's important to keep calm and describe them without panicking. This was our last role play in the last course of the program. Congratulations on making it all the way here. We hope these role plays may have helped you get a better idea of what your next interview might look like. You may want to review all the tips we provided way back in the first course so you're prepared and you nail your IT support interview. Good luck. Congratulations on finishing this lesson from the Google IT Support Certificate. Access the full experience, including job search help, and get the official certificate by clicking the icon or the link in the description. Watch the next lesson in the course by clicking here. And subscribe to our channel for more lessons from upcoming Google Career Certificates.